Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Hugh of Grenoble. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter of Divine Mercy. Our entrance hymn is number 593 in the hymnal. Jesus Christ is risen today. That's number 593. <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, we mark the conclusion of the Easter octave with the celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. We hear in the Gospel of the Apostle Thomas who would not believe unless he had seen. And Jesus says to him, Blessed are those who have not seen, but have believed. Now in the spirits of belief, given us by our baptism, we now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Gloria in excelsis Deo. everlasting mercy who in the very recurrence of the pastoral feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own increase we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn <coughs> by <coughs> by whose blood they have been redeemed <clears throat> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The readings for today can be found on page 117. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of them dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they all were cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Yeah. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death in the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into his nail marks and my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. The priest who proclaimed the gospel is my classmate from the seminary, Father Timothy Vaverick. He's a priest from Texas, uh, where everything is big. And uh, he's uh, here with some of the eighth graders of his parish uh, to see uh, the sights of Washington. And uh, he's visiting with his, uh, his old buddy. So it's always good to see Father Timothy. Uh, his parish back in a town called West, uh, which is near Waco, it, it's, a, it's a much bigger parish. He got a school too, and so, um, so it, it, it's good you could get away a little bit, but work awaits you when you get back. That's the way it is with priests. Um, let's begin with the second reading. John the Apostle, who is uh, in prison on an island called Patmos. He must have done something really wrong because to be put on a prison that's on an island means they didn't want him to escape. And what crime was he guilty of? That he should be arrested? He tells us, I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. Now things don't really change that much uh, in many respects over time. 
if a committed believer in Jesus proclaims God's word uh, and lives according to uh, the Lord's commandments and thereby by holiness of, of life gives testimony to Jesus, depending on the situation and the people they're with, they can get in trouble for that. Which is why many Christians are very hesitant to let people know that they're Christians, let them know that they believe in Jesus as uh, the only savior of the world, and through a holy life, yeah, give witness to him. Jesus used an image for that. It's like taking a lamp and putting it under a bushel basket. The whole purpose of the lamp is defeated. The lamp represents us, the light of faith given us, so why do we want to hide it? We need to ask ourselves that question. But John didn't hide his faith, and uh, he got put in prison. And again, a lot of people today in, in different lands uh, are put in prison because, simply because they're Christians. And in this country, some people, I think, first of all, the medical profession, who, who live God's word and give testimony to Jesus, who refuse to uh, betray their faith in Jesus by engaging in immoral practices, such as sterilization or providing contraceptives and uh, abortifacient uh, drugs, and, uh, and who will not participate in abortions, well, they may not be put in prison yet in this country, but certainly they will not be advanced in the medical profession, and often enough they'll lose their job. So things haven't changed. So John is caught up in spirit on the Lord's day, just like us. It's the Lord's day. We're here because we're caught up in spirit. The Holy Spirit has, has prompted us to be here. And he hears a voice as loud as a trumpet, and that, that's already giving us an indication that it must be God speaking, because when the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, when the word of God spoke to Moses, it sounded like a trumpet. Remember that from the book of Exodus? Mm -hmm. And then he turns around to see uh, the voice, where it's coming from. He sees seven gold lampstands. Seven menorahs. Wow, you, you'd think he's in the temple in Jerusalem, which had seven menorahs to light up the interior of the temple. But wait a minute. By the time John was in prison in Patmos, the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Romans. It, it didn't exist anymore. So what's he seeing? He's seeing the true temple temple in heaven and he sees one like a son of man in other words he sees a human being who's wearing an ankle length robe with a gold sash around his chest and why would he wear that that's what the high priest wore when he's doing his ministry he's seeing a high priest in the temple in heaven doing his ministry, offering the one sacrifice that takes away his sins. And if he's not quite clear yet who it is, he hears the words, do not be afraid. I'm the first and the last and the one who lives. Once I was dead on the cross, but now I am alive forever and ever. Now he knows who it is. Jesus, Jesus. 
And the Lord tells them, write down there for what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. So that this vision given to you may be a vision that through you will be given to the whole church throughout the ages. And because of that vision, we have that big old icon behind the altar, Jesus our high priest on his throne in heaven leading this liturgy, which is a participation in that heavenly liturgy. And that one sacrifice once for all on the cross, which Jesus pleads in heaven, now is being pled on our behalf at every Mass. And when uh, John caught sight of the Lord, he fell down at his feet as though dead. Remember, if you were at the Holy, if you have the Good Friday service at the very beginning when the priest came into the sanctuary, what he did, he fell down as though dead in front of the altar. We do it when we come to church, we genuflect, right? We genuflect before the Lord who is present. Now, let's go to the gospel. It's the evening of that first day of the week, Easter evening. The doors are locked in the upper room. Why? Because the disciples, it says, they're afraid of the eudioi. That's what it says in Greek. We've translated here as the Jews, but it means the people of Judea, who were Jews, to be sure, but not all Jews were Judeans. Jesus and his disciples were Galileans. Their accent gave them away. Remember Peter in the courtyard? You're from Galilee, aren't you? You must be one of his disciples, because he's from Galilee. So they were afraid of the Judean authorities who were looking for them. Not to congratulate them, but to, uh, to cause them harm. But Jesus came and stood in their midst. As he is in our midst right now. And he said to them, peace be with you. That's the typical Jewish greeting, isn't it? Even to this day, shalom, shalom. But then he says, he says it again after he showed them his hands and his side and and they rejoiced because they recognized that's the Lord. We can see his wounds. But he says to them, peace be with you a second time. Why does he do it? Because our peace as Christians is the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is giving them the Holy Spirit by which they believe, by which they are sustained in belief and in hope, and by which Jesus' love, the love he shares with the fathers, poured into their hearts. So that Jesus can now say, As the Father sent me, and that word sent in Greek is the same word that in English is apostle. As I am an apostle sent by the Father, so now I'm going to send you as apostles. And as I had authority from the Father to do the works I did and to proclaim what I proclaimed to you, so you now have my authority. Which is why in our creed we not only say, I believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic, apostolic church. Because Jesus has given the church the mission to speak for him, the word that the Spirit has given to the church, not just any word, but his word. So those who say, I don't believe the church, in effect, are saying, I don't believe Jesus. And then Jesus gives them the sacrament of divine mercy. 
that we celebrate on the Sunday of Divine Mercy, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Now, Jesus, in his earthly ministry, got in trouble with the Pharisees when he said to people, I forgive you your sins, because they said only God can do that. They had not come to understand who Jesus was and to put faith in him. Jesus gives his authority to his priests, ordained for that purpose, to extend forgiveness, divine mercy, in the sacrament of reconciliation. That's why we go, to receive that mercy and be renewed by it and uplifted by it. We don't go, there's no mercy. We go, <laughs> there's mercy. But Thomas isn't there. We don't know why. He was absent. That Sunday, but the next Sunday, the next Lord's Day, Jesus appeared again. Uh, Thomas was with them this time. Now, before Jesus appeared, Tom, uh, the, the other apostles said, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. And he said, no, I don't believe you. Which shouldn't have surprised them, really. Remember when Mary Magdalene went to them and said, I've seen the Lord. And they said, <laughs> I don't believe you. So don't be surprised when you tell people about Jesus, about the church, about his way of life. And they say to you, I don't believe you. Don't be surprised by that. Be saddened, perhaps, but not surprised. But we continue to witness, nonetheless. We're not going to stop doing it. So Jesus says, Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. So Easter evening, Jesus, it says, showed them his hands and his side. Didn't say that the apostles touched his hand and side. But he showed them his hands and side. So that they would understand that it really is him, that really is his human body that now is glorified. It has defeated death. And just come back to life. It's defeated death once for all. It's not going to die again. But Jesus says to, to Thomas, no, why don't you actually touch me? Touch my wounds. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. And then Thomas answers in what really is the high point of the whole Gospel of John. He confesses the faith, our faith. He says, my Lord, yes, he recognizes that that man is his Lord. Same body that is born of the Blessed Virgin, suffered and died on the cross, but then he said something that his eyes could not see because no one can see the divine nature. He said, my Lord and my God. And when you say and believe in your heart that Jesus is my God, then what do you do? You, you, you give your life to him. You surrender everything to him. Jesus, I believe in you. Lead me, guide me, not my will. Yours be done. My Lord lives in me, and I in him, because he has said to me, peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. It's a fitting conclusion to the gospel because how did the gospel of John begin? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the word made flesh who dwells among us. And at the end of this uh, gospel passage, John says, 
Jesus, he did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. And he's done many, many signs in our presence. If we have the faith to see it, he has. Most especially this Eucharist that we're about to celebrate. You talk about a sign and a wonder that bread and wine should become the very body and blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. That's quite a sign. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. Well, wait a minute, John, I'm alive, I'm living and breathing. Oh, that's not the life that John's talking about. He's talking about the life of God living in the heart of a believer who has been baptized and sustained through the preaching of the church and her sacraments. I'll end with mercy. It's Divine Mercy Sunday. So designated by St. John Paul II. Based on a private revelation to St. Faustina, a Polish nun, in the years before World War II. where Jesus revealed himself in a vision that, of course, is, uh, has been replicated in the image that we have in our church. Jesus, I trust in you. That's how mercy comes to us. Jesus, I trust in you. When I trust in you, in nothing but mercy. And when I have received mercy, that's the gift I can give to others. And mercy is nothing but faithful love responding to infidelity. God's faithful love responding to me in my infidelity so that by receiving that mercy, I may be forgiven, reconciled, and raised up to a new life in Jesus. That's mercy. And as Jesus was sent to give God's mercy to the world, we are sent by his spirit to extend that mercy to others. And I want to give a remarkable sign and wonder of God's mercy that's happening right now in that very country where the divine mercy was revealed to St. Faustina in Poland. As you may know, Poland has received millions of Ukrainian refugees. They have not put them in internment camps, in squalid, squalid dwellings. They haven't put them in cages. They've invited them into their home. Now, if you know your European history, Poland disappeared as an independent nation at least twice in its history. It's divided up between Russia and Austria and Prussia in the late 18th century. And then in 1939, a few years after the Divine Mercy Revelation, it was gobbled up again by Soviet Russia and Nazi Germany. If there's anyone in this world who could be angry and bitter and unforgiving, it's the Polish people. And yet... Who more than anyone in the world is accepting the Ukrainian refugees? Not this country, even though we're much bigger, much wealthier. Poland. That's mercy in action. That's the proof that Jesus is alive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us stand. And together profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His mercy endures forever. United in the Holy Spirit, in the joy of the resurrection, let us now turn to our Heavenly Father and present to him our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord. <clears throat> that on this divine mercy Sunday, the faithful may experience anew the mercy of God, and that they may be a fount of mercy to others. We pray to the Lord. Grant our, grant our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. For those bound by sin, or trapped in confusion or doubt, that their faith may be strengthened in the truth, light, and mercy of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For an end to war, and those who suffer its ill effects. For those who have died due to war, for war refugees, that God's peace and justice will take root in every human heart. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. That the Holy Spirit may strengthen the hearts of the young people of our parish who will receive the Sacrament of Confirmation this Wednesday and the First Holy Communion next Sunday. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the poor and those in financial distress, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For faithful marriages and an abundance of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For the sick among our family and friends, especially Kathy Brennan, that the Lord may bless them and protect them from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, especially Earl Connor, that Christ, the Good Shepherd, may lead them safely home to be at peace with our God, our Father. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. For our parishioner Paul Beaver, who is very seriously ill, for strength, Holy Spirit to be with him, for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord on this Divine Mercy Sunday. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. Loving Father, the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, gives us a new birth to a living hope. May we live always in the hope of eternal salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection uh, this morning is the National Collection for Church Missions in Our Own Country. Thank you for your generosity. Our preparation hymn is number 592, Christ is Alive. That's number 592.
grace, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And this Mass is being offered for the intentions, for the proposal of soul of Navidad Rojas. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, 
for our Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Jude, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your servant church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Wilton our Bishop, the Auxiliary Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and for my divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you, Father. Peace be with you. 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 Anius 
stay here. We told his back on the Monday. Me said it and all me. I knew stay here. We told his back on the Monday. Don't know me. And the healing Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Well, we thank the Lord for the many blessings that we have received from his hand during this Easter octave, the ways that we have grown in, in faith and charity. Uh, to thank the Lord also for uh, the blessings of, of a Holy Lent and uh, have being brought in a repentant uh, spirit to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Now, it is a precept of the Church that every Catholic, every faithful Catholic, is bound to confess their sins in the sacrament at least once between the beginning of Lent and the conclusion of the Easter season plus one more week to Trinity Sunday. So if, if any of us has not been to, to confession, made a good confession of their sins, the church reminds us it's important, very important, that we do so. Today, Divine Mercy Sunday, we will mark the feast with a special service at 3.30 p.m. here in the church that will include the recitation of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. We ask your prayers for our young people who will be confirmed this Wednesday by Bishop Campbell, our auxiliary bishop, and those little or younger people who will receive their first Holy Communion next Sunday. Next Saturday, the youth group will be holding a car wash to support their annual trip to the Steubenville Youth Conference. So you're invited to uh, get the pollen washed off your car uh, with a free will a donation to the youth group. Next Sunday, May 1st, you are invited to the annual Bridget McDermott Sunday afternoon tea beginning at 2 p.m. This is, event is put on by the Parish Sodality. It takes place downstairs in Grenoble Hall. It's an uh, opportunity to uh, sample various types of tea and uh, get those little finger sandwiches, and there'll be a little spiritual nourishment as well. So that's next Sunday. <clears throat> there are uh, books, uh, still remaining copies of The Art of Living, the parish's Christmas gift or Easter gift to everybody. So uh, if you do not yet have your copy, uh, please take one. And now I invite you to pick up the prayer card that you will find in the pew racks and pray with me the prayer to St. Hugh of Grenoble to ask his intercession in the 75th year of the founding of our parish. Let's pray together. O God, who wonderfully numbered among your holy shepherds, the Bishop St. Hugh of Grenoble, a man burning with divine charity and outstanding for that faith which overcomes the world, grant through his intercession that we too, persevering in faith and charity, may merit to be sharers of his glory. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the masses and dead, alleluia, alleluia.
today is number 596, Christ the Lord is risen today, number 596. <laughs> 